So I'm going to talk about annotation. So I'm going to share my screen and find the document and put present. So, um, so Zoom has uh, built in uh, the annotation possibility, and many of you may already know all about it, um, but it was until recently uh, pretty new to me. So I wanted to show you so just a couple possibilities. This is something, this is a presentation I gave that I've um, edited very lightly. So, and there may even be new annotation features that I'm not aware of. So, uh, so first, um, here we go. So I would say there are some pros and cons. Um, the cons, it's, it's, it can be a little clunky at first and you need to allow uh, learning periods or the mechanics, erasing and clearing. Um, I just now realize this is practice with friends as a con. I don't think that's really a con, but I would encourage you to practice it with your friends. Uh, it, it can give you a lot of confidence and it's, it's really not that difficult. I think there are a lot of pros and these are some that just came to my mind. Um, it's already integrated in, into Zoom. There's nothing new to sign up for. Um, I've been a little overwhelmed by the, all the new technology and possibilities and um, especially creating new accounts, which I'm reluctant to do so, or to ask students to do. Um, I think it's a great tool for uh, student engagement. And so you can ask everyone to contribute at the same time. So you don't have to wait and have that lag while somebody volunteers. Uh, you don't have to do cold calling. It can be right away. It is instantaneous. And not only you can see the results, but everyone can see the results. And really, you don't need any prep. A lot of us use slides anyway for classes. And so you can um, build into your slides the idea that students will be able to annotate them. Um, I had uh, a friend who has a friend who teaches in grade school and she said, how do you keep people from annotating? So it could be uh, bad after if people start to go nuts on your slide, <laughs> drawing things that are inappropriate, but I hope with college students that won't um, happen. So to find the tool for those of you who may not know where it is, um, up near the top, uh, there's a green block that probably says you're viewing Melissa's screen and you will see a drop down menu that says view options and then choose annotate. And there's a menu with several options. And we'll practice just with these with text stamp and erase and clear, which are very important. Is everybody following? Yeah, so let's uh, get to the practice part. So here are some annotation activities. Um, I have three and then there's a bonus if we have time. Uh, one is what do you consider your best quality as a professor? Um, the next is heart of community. Um, and then where in the world have we been? Um, I'll comment a little bit on the last, uh, the th third activity when we get to it. So, um, so what I'm gonna ask you to do is you only get to choose one. So of these six qualities as a professor, which one do you think best uh, represents you or is most important to you? So if you choose an annotate, you choose text, please type in your name in the box that you think corresponds to you. Great, thank you. This is so obviously in class, I could um, ask what someone from each group to report. I could ask, what was your close second? Um, was it difficult? Was it easy to choose? Um, are there things that I've left off? So for me, I know we have a poll option, but I like this better than a, than a poll if, if the room is pretty small. I think it uh, is a good way uh, it's also kind of democratizing. Everyone can see the results immediately. So, um, 
So I am going to, let's see, somehow, now I forgot where everything is. I'm gonna um, clear y'all, I forgot where mine is. <laughs> oh well, I'll have to teach you to do it. So, so as you can see on the next slide, um, it preserves what was there before. So I'm gonna have everyone erase, so or clear what you, what you did. Somewhere there's a way that I can do it as well. Um, so I can clear it. Um, so I did this for romance studies. So these are uh, romance languages, uh, almost all of them. So if you know how to say heart in any of these languages, please type it in. Excellent. So this is just a super simple activity where you can really um, sort of pool and see what the knowledge of the class is um, or of the people assembled. How much do they know about any particular thing? So I think I figured out where to clear. So I'm going to clear, um, clear viewers drawings. So I was able to clear them all. And then I need to go back. Sorry, I have to think aloud. <laughs> to mouth. Okay, so um, the next one um, is where in the world have you been? So if you would go to stamp and choose a heart and put a heart to any place that you've traveled, that you've been physically. refreshing to see some movement because we're all stuck in one place mostly <laughs> very good so we can so this could could spur a conversation in this particular uh this particular activity i think can also um incur in equity issues because uh ability to travel is often a marker of privilege so i would be very cautious um using this activity. You could ask, for example, where would you like to go? Or where do you wish you were now? <laughs> um, or something like that if you wanted to start a conversation but um, didn't want to, um, someone to make it clear that they've been able to travel to every country in the world because they have a lot of money. So, um, but this is a really fun, um, you can imagine all those kinds of uses uh, for this one. So once again, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna clear. And the so one final sort of bonus slide. Um, let's see, one of my favorite paintings of all time. So for this one, I would like you to choose a stamp, and I think it's the arrow. So if you want to point an arrow to the part of the painting that most intrigues you, that you wish we had time to talk about. Excellent. So, um, so you can see with the stamp, it just makes a, an arrow, you can change the color of the arrow. And Ruth knows how to keep her name there. Ruth, could you tell us how you did that? I think there's a way, but um, they've recently changed um, this as well, that um, because before, you didn't know who was um, 
the name of the person doing the thing didn't appear, but now it does. So, so Zoom is updating and changing a little bit too. So obviously in class, you could do this with photography, you could do with anything. Um, you could see sort of where things clump and talk about that particular part, or if the name is attached, you could also have them uh, ask someone to volunteer to talk about a particular part of the painting. So that's really, um, that was, that's my presentation. Um, so if there are any questions, um, I'd be happy to, happy to take them. Thanks so much, Melissa. We actually did have a couple come in in the chat. Um, okay. Let's see. Um, Susie, do you want to unmute and ask your question to Melissa? Sure. Melissa, what were you using um, that we were annotating on, especially the first uh, slide with the buttons? Are you using PowerPoint? Are you using, um, what are you using and can I use anything? And they you can, can use anything. You can use anything. So in, in a way, I think of the old days when they showed someone using whiteout on a computer screen. Um, so really you're just sort of marking on the glass. It's like a transparency in the old days, really. Um, for, for those of us who have used transparencies, you're just marking on the transparency. And behind it, any kind of screen you can share in Zoom, you can have students annotate. So basically, I mean, like you could even share a Word document that had a list of three different groups and say, put your name under the group you're most interested in, in learning about. And they could just do that and you could do a screenshot and have the groups. Absolutely. It can cool. be anything. It could be a web page. The only thing I don't recommend is that uh, the only thing it should, it should fit in one screen. Because once you move the screen, all the annotations are going to stay where they were. And you can record it as well. So you can, um, you can do the regular recording, but you can also save the screen if it's information that, that you want, like if it's a sign up or something like that. By doing a screenshot or some other way? There's, uh, in the annotation tools, there's a, there's a place for the, the host to, to save the screen. Um, gotcha. I'm not sure that the viewers can save it, but I know that the hosts can save it. So you can save um, screens if they contain information that uh, you need to keep. So it can be anything. I mean, the only challenge is it can't be something that moves. Like you can't scroll down a whole web page and then have the bottom of the web page because it's got to it's got to fit on the screen. Is the it's only perfect for signups though. It's great. It's really easy. Yeah. Um, Thanks, Susie. More questions? I think Katie Hyde had a question as well. Katie, do you want to unmute and ask your question? I can't hear you, Katie. Let's see, she's unmuted, but let's see. Oh, still can't hear. Can't hear, but Katie, do you want me to just pose it from the chat box? Okay, so Katie had asked, um, is there a way viewers can zoom the shared screen? I don't understand what um, you mean by Zoom. Take it larger. Oh, I see. That's, ah, I got it. <laughs> I'm confused by Zoom. <laughs> it was hard to see all the countries. <laughs> yeah, that is a challenge as well because um, I think a lot of it has to do, like I'm seriously considering getting another screen hookup so I can see all the people and the thing I'm projecting at the same time. But I think it's, uh, that's also a challenge. So you have to make it um, as big as you can, um, assuming, yeah, so th that's a challenge. It's, there's no way to zoom in that I, that I know of. Um, I'm not saying there's not, but I haven't found a way yet. So you have to make it as big as you possibly can. Um, you might encourage them uh, to just do speaker view or something so that the screen is as large as it can be. I have also had to teach people to move the, the heads. So, because it's covering part of the screen, et cetera. So that's, that's also part of the challenge is, um, it has to fit on, on the screen. And I don't think there's a way to zoom in to make it bigger. Thanks for the question, Katie, and response, Melissa. Melissa, I think we have one more from Jen. Jen, do you want to unmute? Sure, yeah. I had a question on if it's possible to annotate at a later date, so if you have asynchronous classes, 
and are interested in students um, annotating later on, like say if they're watching the recording. I, yeah, I don't know about that. I mean, for, uh, I would, for that instance, um, I teach writing and I, I'm considering having a collaborative document, like a Google document or something where they could just enter in asynchronously and do it if there's some kind of collaborative document. Um, that's a great question. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. I guess they could do a screenshot and maybe annotate. Or something. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Thanks, Jen. I'm curious, can I ask a question or a yeah. follow-up? Um, I don't use this tool, but if anyone uses uh, VoiceThread, if it were a small, um, like not record, not annotating on a uh, part of an entire hour long or however long your live session recording would be, but on a small item, would VoiceThread be an option for asynchronous annotations? For those who use it, I see some kind of shrugs, maybe nods. Yeah, I think things like, um, well, you could also do it with video, I think with play posit as well. And um, voice dev would work for that as well, that you could do still images or um, or short clips of video yeah, or short clips. Yeah, yeah. But this is less set up. <laughs> totally, totally. <laughs> Great. Great questions. Are there any more questions before we move into Rebecca's presentation? Just gonna look through all of the squares. And if more come up, please feel free to chat them. Um, they'll be around to answer. But Melissa, thank you so much. This was awesome. Thank you all. <laughs>